need it and want it, but because it will set the pattern for other social security measures, both here in Saskatchewan and elsewhere in Canada. Douglas said, people appreciate something if they've paid for it. If you give people a card from Santa Claus, entitling them to free hospital services, it's not good psychology. I opposed the idea because I thought that the burden of uh, utilization or deterrent fees is going to really fall on the low-income people. In 1959, Douglas proposed a compulsory prepaid health plan the country would come to know as Medicare. 60% of Saskatchewan residents would vote against it. I think the legacy is to a very considerable extent overblown. In launching its CCF program, the legislature increased spending more than 20% in its first term. To pay for it, said Douglas, taxes must rise. The sales tax eventually grew from 2 to 5%. Treasurer Clarence Fines used extra revenue to balance the budget, 15 years in a row. Fines said, it was hard, but we did it. Afterward, a colleague recalled, in the mindset created by the CCF, the values of the farm and small town were held as almost sacred. Saskatchewan would tolerate no less. The Premier's official car was a Dodge. Douglas would not use a Cadillac. At the office, the Premier promised to answer every letter. He said it lets you know what the people's complaints are. In office, the CCF no longer spoke of abolishing capitalism. Instead, it embarked on the most sweeping campaign of public ownership the country had ever seen. Douglas called it our struggle for economic democracy. moved to Regina and started working in the Cooperation and Markets Branch. That's when I learned about credit unions and it was really quite an exciting time in that office because the credit union movement was just starting. In small towns, credit unions were celebrated as an expression of community spirit. By 1955, Saskatchewan had nearly 300 credit unions province-wide. In a credit union, we go out, we get the diamonds and nickels and dollars, but we pull them and make loans to ourselves. So when you come to town and come and see the treasurer, you can sign a pledge to save a little money each month. You can have a share. When you get a $5 share, you might be able to borrow up to $25. <clears throat> An ordinary person should have a standard of living to command the respect of his fellow men. Uh, as individuals, or individuals, we are entitled to this. And through the credit union, we're going to work to this end. Come and see us when you come to town. I can remember going to meetings and listening to the politicians and the people. And this was their attitude. We may not be NDPers or CCFers, but we will vote for that man because he does things. Douglas said, a person has to be pretty unintelligent to think a government could run everything. His government would run many things. It created the Saskatchewan Bus Transportation Company. The venture put taxpayers in busing, said Douglas, because the Greyhound people only operated between the main cities. For those who drove a car, Douglas introduced state auto insurance, a program so new the CCF assured drivers they were covered even if they left the province. Saskatchewan motorists have the benefit of this insurance when driving in Canada and the United States. Their insurance costs around $10 a year on the average, the lowest priced auto insurance in the world. Regulation spread. Douglas created public boards to market Saskatchewan fur, then fish, and wool. Saskatchewan wool products was a government blanket factory. It cost taxpayers nearly a million dollars before the venture failed in 1957. Some others would follow. 
really the government experimented and most of the times they were successful and the at times they were, they were not successful so that's that's true of uh, private uh, industry as well unsuccessful was a prince albert box factory expropriated after the owner would not recognize a union workers kept their jobs at public expense a Regina tannery put taxpayers in the shoe business. It created 150 jobs, but turned no profits. Tommy Douglas was the next speaker. He said the cooperative movement offered hope for a better life to the people of the world, and to youth in particular. From the Cooperative Union of Saskatchewan, he said, comes inspiration, co-op education and guidance. Study groups and farm forums point the way forward to a brighter world. When people act as a group, they are indestructible and invincible. The CCF uh, and Tommy Douglas were really, I think, after a real socialist province. They wanted to, they wanted, according to me and my thoughts, they wanted to run the province and guide my life. I didn't want that, I wanted to guide my own life. And lots of people are like that. The CCF would remain a uniquely Saskatchewan experience. No other province would elect a CCF government. In 1961, as the only socialist premier in Canada, Douglas left Saskatchewan to lead the New Democratic Party. He said once he would put the flag of socialism on Parliament Hill. Douglas would never become prime minister. New Democrats would never win with Douglas in four successive elections. Twice, Douglas lost his own seat in the Commons and never regained the influence he had as Premier of Saskatchewan. My expectation was that Douglas would win and that he would uh, make a real impact on uh, public life and uh, politics across Canada and that uh, we would probably see Douglas before his uh, uh, retirement from politics as probably leader of the opposition. I half suspected, proved not to be true, that uh, politics in Canada would realign. Leaving Saskatchewan, Douglas said, I hope the record will show that I serve the people not too badly. He would never live here again. Douglas retired to Ottawa and was buried there at his request. There isn't the same community spirit that there was years ago. We lose a great deal. In unity there is strength, isn't there? It just didn't turn out the way these great cooperators had hoped it would. Take it easy, brother.